Today we are in uh, 2 Corinthians. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. Second Corinthians five sixteen to twenty one. And that says From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God, I thank you so much uh, again for your word. Um, that you've given us your word, that we can learn more about you through your word, that you speak to us through your word. There's so many good things, and I just pray that I would do your word justice this morning. If I say anything wrong or untrue, I just pray that it would not be believed this morning. But God, I pray that your truth this morning would be remembered in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Work in our hearts, Lord, this morning, and uh, give us understanding of your truth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you again, Lord, and be with me as I speak your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you a sinner or a saint? That's a question that will come up for discussion from time to time among believers. Uh, as those saved by grace, as those who have placed their faith in Christ Jesus, what are we now? Because if we go back to our lives before Christ, the answer is easy. We were sinners. Certainly, we were sinners. Ever since Adam ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he became a sinner. And that carried over to all his descendants. Sin spread to every one of his descendants. And since Adam was the first human, his descendants include every human. Romans 5.12 tells us, Romans 5.12 tells us that sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. And I know it said spread to all men, uh, but the Greek word used there means more than just men. It means mankind. So it's men and women. Uh, so death spread to all men and women because all sinned. Adam's sin runs throughout all his descendants, male and female, and so his punishment, death, also runs throughout his descendants. As Romans 6.23 tells us, the wages of sin is death. The punishment for sin is death. So for every human born to this earth, the truth is we all sin and we all die. Every human is born sinful. Every human sins. Every human is a sinner. But once we accept Christ, are we still sinners? Even as those saved, we, we still mess up. We're, we're not perfect yet. We still have the flesh. So yes, we sin, and that by definition would make us sinners. We are those who sin. But let's look a little closer at what the Bible has to say about being sinners and about being saints. So, what is a saint? Is it someone who has passed away that the Catholic Church has named as a saint? Perhaps those people are saints, uh, but even the Catholic Church calling them 
canonized saints would only claim that they're the ones that they are certain are saints. Being recognized as a true saint isn't something that's up to the Catholic Church. It's something that's up to God. So when we look to God's Word, when we look to the Bible, what do we find there about saints? One thing that we find is that you can be a saint while still being alive on earth. Because Paul writes to saints. For example, in the very first verse of the book of Ephesians, Paul begins by introducing himself and who he is writing to, saying, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus. So there are saints in Ephesus, which means, yes, there are saints on earth. So who are they? What is a saint? What does the word saint even mean? Well, if we look at the Greek word for saint in this verse, we see the word hagios, which means set apart or, or holy. So a saint is someone who is set apart. Set apart from what? Set apart from the ways of the world. Different from the world. A saint is someone who is different from the world. Different how? Different because they have Jesus. As Paul says in Ephesians 2, 18 and 19, for through him, through Jesus, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Through Jesus, one is no longer a stranger or an alien to God the Father. They now have access to him, which makes them fellow citizens with the saints. They are included among the saints. So... If you are in Christ, you're a saint. If you are truly a Christian, if you have made the decision to turn away from your sin toward instead following Jesus, committing your life to him, placing your faith in him and what he's done, you know, dying on the cross and rising again, then your sins are forgiven. You have been saved from hell. and You are allowed into heaven after you die. And you are counted among the saints. You are a saint. In Christ, you are a saint. But again, on earth, even as a saint, you still have sinful flesh. So what do we say to that? Why even have the question, are we, are we saints or are we sinners, if, if it looks like we're both? It's because we're not regarded as both. When we came to Christ, we died to sin. In Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Our old self, it has died. It is no longer our old self that lives, but Christ who lives in us. Christ is now our life. So even though the remnant of our old selves, our, our sinful flesh, still clings to us, we now live by faith in Jesus. We have died to sin and we are alive to God. We have been crucified with Christ. We have identi identified ourselves with his death. And now, in our new life, with his resurrection. That's actually what baptism is about. Dead to sin, going down into the water, death. Under the water identifies us with his burial. And then coming back up identifies us with him in new life, in resurrection. So water baptism symbolizes the transformation that has actually happened in our life. Right? We have died to ourselves. We've turned away from our sinful path. And we have come to Christ through faith, entering into new life, dead to sin, alive to God. Paul talks about this in Romans 6. 
So starting in verse 2, he says, How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. In Christ, you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. Consider yourselves saints rather than sinners. Consider yourselves according to your new nature rather than the nature of the flesh, which brings us to 2 Corinthians 5.16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we we, uh, saints on earth have the flesh and we still mess up and we still sin, we don't regard each other according to the flesh because really, that's not us anymore. It still clings to us, but really, it's not us. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If you are in Christ, you are a saint. You are a new creation. You have been completely transformed. You are no longer dead in your sins. You have died to your sins. You are now alive with God. You are now alive to God. Which means even though your flesh is a hindrance, it's not really you. Even though you give in to temptation, that's a work of your flesh. And I know it's hard to separate uh, that. It's hard to separate that because... From, from your perspective, your flesh is you, and your new self is you. But only one part is truly you now that you've been transformed. I'm going to go through a passage that in the past has seemed a little confusing, so I'll go a little slower through it. Uh, otherwise, all you might hear is, do, do not do, do not do, do not do, do, uh, do what I do. Anyways, yeah, it's Paul again in Romans 7, 15 to 8, verse 1. For I do not understand my own actions. So this is a conundrum with the flesh. Because the flesh is a part of Paul. His sins are still his own actions. Even if he is a new creation. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. He, ha- he, as a new creation, doesn't want to sin. But he still does. And he hates it. But still, he did it. Right? The very thing that he hates, he did. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Because he hates it, because it's not something he, as the new creation, 
wants to do. He agrees with God's ways. He is in line with God's ways. So he says, it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. It's not a work of him, the new creation. It's a work of the sin that dwells within his flesh, which I know is hard because, yeah, we want to do bad things, you know, for us in our lives when we're tempted. There is that part that wants to do bad things. There's something in us that wants to sin. Otherwise, temptation wouldn't be so appealing. But that's not you, the new creation, that wants to sin. That's the flesh. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So again, it's not him, the new creation, that does the sinning. It's the sin that dwells within him that is in his flesh. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, and remember that, in my inner being, But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. So it's a battle, right? As it is with us to battle against our flesh, waging war against our flesh. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You will not be condemned. You will not be sentenced to hell. If you are in Christ Jesus, you will inherit eternal life. But yeah, looking at this shows the two parts of you, right? Which is you, you are a new creation and your flesh, which is sinful, the new creation and the flesh. But you yourself, as the new creation, you don't sin. It's no longer you who sin, but the the sin that dwells in your flesh. So then are you, as the new creation, a sinner? No, actually. The sinner is your flesh. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Not will be a new creation, is a new creation right now, right here on earth. The old has passed away, Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Not counting their trespasses against them. If we are in Christ, our sins, our trespasses are completely forgiven. They're not counted against us anymore. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God for our sake. He made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It's amazing, the love of God, when you see that it says, for our sake, the sake of sinners, because that's what we were, sinners. For the sake of sinners, 
He made Jesus, who, who knew no sin. He was the only sinless person who was also God. But he made Jesus to be the sin offering, the one who took all our sins, past, present, and future, upon himself. He was the perfect sacrifice, the only perfect human life. And he was given up. His life was given up for every other human life, which was imperfect, which is sinful, which was deserving of death and hell, so that we might become saints, so that we might become righteous. And not just any degree of righteous, but the only degree of righteous that can enter heaven, the righteousness of God. And that's why we're that's how we're seen because of Christ. We are covered by his righteousness. So if you are in Christ, don't think of yourself as a sinner. Do not regard yourself according to the flesh. Think of yourself as a saint. Regard yourself as righteous. And it's not a righteousness of your own, so don't get proud, right? Praise the God who deserves the glory. Praise Jesus who was crucified for you. Praise the one who made you righteous because of your faith in him and because of his grace. I know we often call ourselves sinners because we don't want to seem like we're better than those who aren't believers, who, who don't know Christ, because it's true, we're not better than them. We're not. The only, th the only good thing about us is Christ in us. But sometimes identifying ourselves as sinners can have the effect of seeing ourselves as perhaps guilty when we sin. But as those who have been forgiven of our sins, past, present, and future, we are no longer guilty. Nothing you do is going to surprise God. He knows your future, right? He's seen what you will do. You're not guilty. Should you do your utmost to cut sin out of your life? Yes, right? This is not a, a cop-out, right? This doesn't mean you ignore sin. Should you acknowledge God in, in regret of what you've done when you sin? Yeah, you should. Should you try to change your ways? Relying on the Spirit of God, yes. But you are not guilty. Your debt for sin has been paid in full. And when you accepted Christ in faith, you accepted that. So it's done. It's finished. You have no more debt. You have no more guilt. It's all been taken care of in Christ. For us saints still on earth, as a person, we are composed of the new creation that we are and the flesh. So if you look at us flesh and all, then yeah, technically since we sin, you can call us sinners. But that should not be how we identify ourselves because with our true selves, we have died to sin. We are alive to God. We have been transformed. So identify yourself with what you truly are inside, with your inner being, as Paul put it, with what has been transformed. Identify yourselves as saints, not as sinners, because even when we do what we as new creations do not want to do, it's not we who do it, but the sin that dwells within our flesh. So do not regard yourself according to the flesh. You are a new creation. You are completely righteous in the eyes of God. You are a saint. All because of the work of Jesus Christ, who paid your debt in full on the cross and rose again displaying the transformational power of the Lord who makes those that have died to sin alive to God. Bow with me in prayer.
God, you are wonderful, and I thank you so much that, uh, that you've given us new life, that you've transformed us uh, completely on the inside, and uh, I know we're still burdened by this, this flesh, and we still sin, but help us to identify ourselves with you, Jesus. Help us to identify ourselves as yours as those in Christ, as saints. Thank you, Lord. Help us to know that we're, we're not guilty. Help us not to just uh, excuse sin. Help us to still fight against our flesh and not give up that fight, to cut sin more and more out of our life. Continue to sanctify us, Lord, because that's so important. We can't just... We can't just turn a blind eye to our sin, Lord, because I know that you hate sin. But Lord, thank you that, again, you've, you've, you, you, you've paid the price for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Nothing we do is going to surprise you. You know our future. You knew our future back when you died for us. And... Uh, yeah, again, I thank you so much that when we came to you, it was all covered. That we didn't just accept uh, our, our payment for sin for our past sins, but we accepted a payment in full. So thank you so much, God. You are so wonderful. And I just pray again that you would be on our hearts and on our minds and that you would help us in our walks as we go out from here to continue to serve you in the name of Jesus in a way that is worthy of you, God. Grow our love for you in the name of Jesus, but also just help us to remember our identity is in you, that we are saints, that we are righteous because of your righteousness, Jesus. Thank you so much. Uh, I pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.